Radio Voice Italia. Philadelphia. Class is now in session. Christopher Columbus University is on air from Philadelphia and broadcasting worldwide from within the shadow of Marconi Plaza. Radio Voice Italia is proud to present a recurring segment with civil rights author, professional researcher, and renowned Christopher Columbus expert, Robert Felix Petron Esquire. Buongiorno tutti and welcome to Radio Voice Italia's Christopher Columbus University, where we teach you the truth about the greatest hero of the 15th and 16th centuries, Christopher Columbus, and update you on the international efforts to preserve Christopher Columbus's legacy. I'm your host, Il Professore, Robert Petron. Today on our Christopher Columbus University segment, we have a lot of news updates, so let's get started. Our top news story this week The Italian Parliament has voted to defend the holiday of Columbus Day and statues of Columbus in the United States. That's right. The nation of Italy is coming like the cavalry to defend the United States against the Marxist terrorists attempting to destroy our country from the inside. The Conference of Presidents of Major Italian American Organizations reports in a press release, quote, History was made today when parliamentarians overwhelmingly approved a motion in defense of Christopher Columbus. The motion was presented by the Honorable Fuchsia Nisoli and the Honorable Federico Molicone, members of the Italian Parliament's Chamber of Deputies. Parliamentarians Nisoli and Molicone have spent years defending Christopher Columbus as a symbol of Italian-American history and pride. Their motion, adopted by the Chamber of Deputies, commits the government of the nation of Italy, quote, to take action on the political and diplomatic level so that Italian cultural heritage in the USA and the symbolic figure of that heritage embodied by Christopher Columbus may be safeguarded, end quote, and to secure, quote, the real historical role of Christopher Columbus, end quote. President and Judge Basil Russo of the Conference of Presidents of Major Italian American Organizations reports that the Conference of Presidents fully endorses this first ever motion by the Italian Parliament and is very grateful for their support. The Conference of Presidents, Philitalia International, the Columbus Heritage Foundation, the Columbus Citizens Foundation, the Commission for Social Justice, UNICO, the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy, the Italian Sons and Daughters of America, the Italian One Voice Coalition, the National Columbus Education Foundation, and many, many more such organizations are committed to protecting and preserving all holidays, parades, and statues, and monuments to Christopher Columbus. So be warned, Marxists. Fox News reports that Chula Vista, California, has voted to permanently remove a decades-old Christopher Columbus statue and replace it with a new monument, quote, honoring diversity and indigenous peoples. Listeners, you may recall that in episode five, I had Rafael Ortiz on as a guest, a Columbus expert who describes himself as a, quote, Puerto Rican of Taino descent. When I asked him who is behind the pulling down of all of these statues, he said Marxists. Remember that. It's not just me saying this. Notice how those responsible for tearing down uh, Columbus statue, the Columbus statue in Chula Vista, They want to replace it with a, quote, monument honoring diversity and indigenous peoples. Yeah, aside from the fact that the tribal peoples are not indigenous to the Americas, that whole replacement of the individual, in this case, Christopher Columbus, with the collective diversity and indigenous peoples, that's a telltale textbook page out of the playbook of Marxist ideology. Also, the same article reports that community members made such statements as, quote, The Columbus statue and monuments alike are reminders that white supremacy is condoned and glorified and expressing their hope that the government can, quote, correct history. You know, this oppressor versus oppressed narrative of white supremacy and talk of revising history. These are time tested tactics of Marxist authoritarians like Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot and Ho Chi Minh. And you know what? Shame on Fox News for writing at the end of that article, quote, critics of tributes of Columbus cite the fact that Columbus enslaved Native Americans and played a part in introducing European diseases to the Native Americans. 
Yeah, you know what? It is not a fact that Columbus enslaved Native Americans. We've proven that false time and again, particularly in episodes three, four, and five. And we will continue to disprove this lie in future episodes. Also, it is not a fact that Columbus introduced European diseases to anyone. And to the extent his crew did or the Spanish settlers did, Fox News leaves out that the introduction of diseases was mutual. And while all the diseases introduced by Europeans to the tribal peoples have been cured by modern science, the same cannot be true of all of the diseases the tribal peoples introduced to the Europeans. For example, the tribal peoples introduced syphilis to the Europeans, and modern science still has no cure for that fatal disease. The Philadelphia Stinkwirer, I, I mean Inquirer, reports that Philadelphia is looking for a, quote, better system of commemoration than statues and holidays. Again, we're hearing very Marxist overtones here. It says Philly is, quote, still grappling with place names and monuments that honor people whose legacies many find offensive. Yeah, out of ignorance, you know, maybe if people listen to the show and learn the truth about Christopher Columbus, they wouldn't be offended by him, but recognize him as the hero of civil rights that he is. But again, Marxists are about eliminating icons, secular or religious so that nothing is subservient to the state. And offense is the currency of Marxists. The Stinkwirer goes on to report, quote, the mayor would like to see more influential Philadelphians of color represented in public monuments. Yeah, well, if you're looking for people of color, Columbus, a genuine, fits the bill. As we established in episode six, Italians are the people of the most color of any identifiable ethnic group having in their veins the blood of North Africans, Middle Easterners, Lombards, Iberians, Central Europeans, and all the original tribes of the Italic Peninsula and all its islands, and all the foreign marauders who plundered those. Finally, the Stinkwire reports that the Lenape Nation of Pennsylvania's Tribal Council, and listeners note that the Lenape Nation of Pennsylvania's Tribal Council uses the same terminology I use, tribal, not indigenous. They support the celebration of a day in honor of the tribal peoples, of course. Yeah, well, so do all Italians. And it should be on August 9th, the day the United Nations celebrates International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples. And it should not be on Columbus Day. But, you know, listeners, pitting Italians versus the tribal peoples all plays into the hands of the Marxists who rely on an oppressor versus oppressed narrative and divide and conquer tactics to tear down Western culture and replace it with the murderous authoritarian collectivism of Marx and Engel. The Delaware Business Times reports that Wilmington removed its Christopher Columbus statue this month because city officials saw, quote, social media threats against it. What cowards. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Wilmington. How about a police presence instead of caving to the racist mob? The Delaware Business Times recognized as Columbus as a, quote, symbol of Italian courage and ingenuity and a, quote, symbol of pride in many Italian-American communities. But in the same article, the reporter, Mr. Jacob Owens, wrongly reports, quote, the explorer has long drawn ire for his recorded violence against and enslavement of indigenous peoples in his travels, end quote. Wrong! That was Francisco de Bobadilla, Mr. Owens, not Christopher Columbus. Listen to episodes three, four, and five of this show and to my future episodes, and you'll see how ignorant you are of history. Owens also reports in his article that Wilmington is also removing the statue to Declaration of Independence signer Caesar Rodney, whose family members were also Italian immigrants, and who is known for riding through the night on July 1st, 1776, from Delaware to Philadelphia, to cast the deciding vote to declare the United States independence from Great Britain. The same italophobic Marxist terrorists seeking to remove Christopher Columbus's statue and Caesar Rodney's statue don't seem to care that both men were not only people of color, but civil rights activists. As Speaker of the Delaware General Assembly, Rodney proposed a bill to prohibit the importation of slaves into Delaware in 1766. And the entirety of episode three of this show is dedicated to the 12 reasons why Christopher Columbus was the first civil rights activist of the Americas. But it, the truth is, Marxists 
don't really care about civil rights. They claim to because civil rights activism necessarily involves undoing oppression. So pretending to care about civil rights allows Marxists to paint the world with their oppressed versus oppressors hogwash. The most outrageous story of the week is our update to the Randolph, New Jersey school board's decision that we reported on earlier to rename Christopher Columbus Day to the incorrectly named Indigenous Peoples Day. Well, after pushback from local Italian American organizations and other interested citizens and parties, the school board announced a shockingly petulant and childish new policy eliminating the names of all holidays on the school board's calendar and just replacing them with the words day off. No Thanksgiving, no President's Day, no Martin Luther King's birthday, no Memorial Day, no Veterans Day, just day off. I told you the attack on Christopher Columbus was just a pilot program to a larger long-term campaign to destroy all American icons. Board member Doreen Roche said, if we don't have anything on the calendar, we don't have to have anyone have hurt feelings or anything like that. What an absolutely infantile statement. Republican State Senator, State Senator Anthony Bucco attended the school board meeting and spoke out against the change. Other residents objected to the fact that the initial vote to rename Christopher Columbus Day was taken without public notice. Italian American One Voice Coalition member Chiara Ricupero called for the reinstatement of Christopher Columbus Day to the school calendar. The Italian American One Voice Coalition held a press conference at which the coalition's vice president, Frank Lorenzo, said that the board's decision to remove all holiday names, quote, shocked the consciousness of residents and elected officials, which is why it has made both national and international news. VP Lorenzo went on to say, let the community be very, very clear. The Italian American community will no longer allow school boards, groups, or individuals to target our children, insult our culture, engage in insidious ethnic humor, or indoctrinate students with malicious scholarship. One Voice Coalition President Manny Alfano said, quote, the decision to remove all holidays violates the spirit of diversity and inclusion and drains the dignity of not just Italian American students, but those of all ethnic groups. President Alfano went on to say, the least restrictive means would be to celebrate the tribal peoples on a separate day so that both cultures could be celebrated. However, the school board decided not to take this approach and acted based on their personal whim. Two days after these statements by the One Voice Coalition, the school board announced a special meeting to consider a motion to rescind the vote to eliminate all holidays and the earlier vote to eliminate Christopher Columbus Day. So this is working, folks. We have to keep up the fight. President Ronald Reagan said, quote, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction, end quote. Many thanks to the Italian American One Voice Coalition for their efforts to support the IAOVC's efforts at defending and educating about Christopher Columbus and Italian American civil rights. Visit IAOVC.org. That's IAOVC.org. And if you want to donate to them, add slash donate to the end of that. So that brings us to the substantive portion of today's class. Exactly who are these Columbus detractors? that appear in all of these news articles. Well, I call them Marxists uh, when I refer to them in reading the news. And as you recall, in episode five, Rafael Ortiz, the Columbus expert who has written several books in both Spanish and English about Christopher Columbus, he, when I asked him who are the Columbus detractors, said they are Marxists and anti-American radical groups. And I think he's right. I really probably would refine the term Marxist if really called to the carpet about it, I would say that they were neo-Marxists. Because the end goal here isn't really the means of production in the hands of the proletariat, because in the United States there really is no proletariat and bourgeoisie classes specifically. So what the neo-Marxists do in the American milieu is they substitute racial sectarianism for class division. And their end goal really is what they call 
equity, which is just sugar-coated Marxist theory, where, you know, what you have will be taken away from you, and what sacrifices you made and how hard you worked for it, be damned. And what you have will then be redistributed, not only to those who can't sacrifice or work, but to those who won't sacrifice or work. And then we'll all be equally miserable and destitute. See all attempts at socialism and communism in the world. But I don't think that the neo-Marxists are the only groups that make up these detractors. I would say that it is more or less an intersectional coalition of groups. Now, I guess they're all neo-Marxist in a sense, but let's get a little bit more specific. Over the past few weeks, I've been compiling a list. Every time I think of a group that is in this intersectional coalition, I write it down on this list. So I'm going to read the list. I, Neo-Marxists are at the top. Uh, and you can, you know, you can split hairs and say that the remaining individuals, the main, remaining groups on this list are all neo-Marxists, but uh, I'll leave that for you to decide. So after the neo-Marxists, I have down here on the list critical race theorists. So these are the people that are now indoctrinating our students, not only in universities, but also in high schools and now grade schools. Their main, the main thrust of their philosophy is that you not only have to be non-racist, you have to be what they call, quote, anti-racist. But then when you look at what they mean by anti-racist, it's actually employing neo-racism. So, you know, it's employing, you know, it's called critical race theory. So that's critical theory. That's Marxist theory. That's the oppressor versus the oppressed. So what they do with their neo-racism is they, they say that, you know, anybody with white skin is the oppressor and anybody else is the oppressed. And then, you know, in the, in the Christopher Columbus context, they portray Italians as white and Columbus as a white oppressor. And they talk a big deal about following the science, but, you know, then they ignore the science that is against them. Like the fact that Italians are from the Italic Peninsula, which is in the middle of the Mediterranean, Mediterranean meaning middle of the world, referring to the old western world so italians are in the middle of the middle of the old western world which makes them the epicenter of genetic commingling and therefore the first among the first mixed race peoples and therefore people of color and therefore columbus was one of these people and cannot be categorized as white i mean really folks look at italian people carefully our skin is not white my skin is the very olive Okay, I'm, I'm not white. Look at the hair of Italian people. Look at their eyes. I mean, all right, my father had blue eyes, but he had, his hair was black. I mean, and his, his father was, was dark-skinned. You know, the science just doesn't back up critical race theory, but they don't care about that. Anyway, moving on. The next group in my list I put down as the anti-Westerners. And I think uh, these are people who are against Western culture. And I think a subset of the anti-Westerners are the globalists because the globalists see the West as the final obstacle in their path to megalomaniacal world domination economically. And, you know, what the globalists ignore just like the critical race theorists ignore the science, as I talked about in episode seven, the anti-Westerners and the globalists, they ignore the peace of Westphalia. If you don't know much about the peace of Westphalia, it happened in 1648. It put an end to the 80 years war and the 30 years war in Europe. And what we learned from the peace of Westphalia and, and the years that followed it is that globalist empires, they don't work. And neither does what's at the other end of the spectrum, petty tribalism. And that the best middle ground is the nation state, because the nation state is just the right size to encapsulate a particular culture and a particular language while still living room for the culture and language next door. So, you know, the globalists, they, they want to just ignore that lesson and return to the globalist empire that we undid with the peace of Westphalia. So that's that bullet point. The next bullet point in the list I wrote down was Antifa, which, if you believe them, stands for anti-fascist. But that's ironic because they literally employ fascism despite their name. Uh, so I say that Antifa actually stands for anti-First Amendment because they are very much against freedom of speech or any speech that opposes what they stand for, which is, of course, 
neo-fascism. So they're the new brown shirts or black shirts. And if you think, uh, like a prominent politician once said, that they are just an idea and not a group, look up Andy No. His last name is spelled N-G-O, but it's pronounced No. Andy No was a member of Antifa until he figured out what they were really all about and he left. And now Antifa is trying to kill him because he's telling the truth about them. So if we're going to put Antifa on the list, we have to put the, the other group on the list, BLM, uh, which I say stands for Bolshevik Lies Movement. You can also say BLM stands for buys large mansions because that's what one of the founders did with much of the money donated to them during the riots that occurred during the shutdown. Uh, she uh, she purchased a mansion in, what was it, Topanga County, in California, where there are no black lives. And uh, she, either she or her co-founder is literally on video saying, quote, we are trained organizers. We are trained Marxists. Look it up. Her words, not mine. So that's why I think BLM is uh, best defined as Bolshevik lies movement. But they'll, they'll tell you it stands for Black Lives Matter. And, uh, you know, even if that is what BLM stands for, I submit to you that the word black in Black Lives Matter does not refer to African-American people. It actually refers to the black bloc. Look that up. I mentioned it in episode two. It's block without a K on the end because they have enough Ks already in KKK, so they don't need another one in black block. But the black block is basically a loose amalgam of Marxist organizations. They're very, um, very active in Europe. And they're active here in the United States, but they just don't call themselves the black block. They call themselves Black Lives Matter or Antifa and what have you. All right, so uh, BLM and other race hustlers they, they're on the list. After them, I put the postmodernists. Now, postmodernism is a school of philosophy that believes, among other things, that there is no such thing as objective truth because, as they posit, since we are human and perceive the world through our five senses, our experience and understanding of the world is necessarily filtered through those five senses. And therefore, we can never really come to any objective truth about the world. And, okay, look, fair enough. Let's give the devil his due, right? There's some truth to that. But, you know, they're positing that as an objective truth, which is what makes their, their philosophy crumble. And also, they're ignoring the fact that uh, as human beings, because of our shared humanity, we can share perceptions of the world that bring us to, if not an objective truth, at least an intersubjective truth, which is as close practically and practicably as you can get, and it's good enough. So the, because the postmodernists don't believe in objective truth, I put them in the list because they're the reason why the Columbus detractors have no compunction about just telling lies about Christopher Columbus. Just not only telling lies, because there are two types of lies. There are lies that are just like falsehoods. And then there are lies that are actually the opposite of what is true. And this kind of opposite speak is exactly what the postmodernists and the rest of the Columbus detractors are doing to Christopher Columbus. All right, so, you know, in case there are any other revolutionaries uh, that I missed, I just put another bullet point for other revolutionaries. So, you know, these include Antifa and BLM, but, uh, you know, in case I missed a significant group, that you can lump them into that catch-all bullet point. And, of course, you know, revolutionaries in this context is just a self-aggrandizing euphemism for domestic terrorists. And last but not least on the list, I wrote ideologues. And that's a very broad category, too, because you can have ideologues on both sides of the political spectrum. You can have far-right ideologues like the KKK, who in the 1920s tried to eliminate Christopher Columbus Day and tear down all his statues and monuments. And you can have ideologues on the far neo-Marxist left, like all of the groups I just mentioned, who in the 2020s are now trying to eliminate Christopher Columbus Day and tear down all of his statues and monuments. And that's why I say that these groups that I just mentioned are really the ideological heirs of the Ku Klux Klan. So what do all of these groups 
really have in common that brings them together as an intersectional coalition? Well, as Rafael Ortiz said in episode five, they are anti-American, or as we might say, un-American. Did you ever notice that there's no phrase like un-Italian or un-Polish or un-Japanese, but there is un-American? And that's no coincidence. That's because unlike other countries, American identity is not founded on ethnicity. It's founded on shared values. And these are the values that all of these groups I just listed oppose. And that's what they have in common. They reject objective truth. They reject enlightenment rationalism. They reject reason, legal reasoning, the neutral principles of constitutional law, and equality theory, which they replace with what they call equity theory, which of course, as I said, is just sugar-coated Marxism. So those are the Columbus detractors as far as I can tell. Did I miss anybody? Well, if I did, if you can think of someone that I didn't mention, let me know. Correspond with me. Go to that website I always mention at the end of the show, preservecolumbus.us. There is a viewer feedback tab there in the sidebar. If you click on that, you can actually send me messages. You could tell me what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. You can ask me questions, which I can answer on the air. You can suggest topics for discussion, which I'd be happy to discuss in future episodes. And you can let me know who else are the Columbus detractors. Who did I miss? So go ahead. Head over there. I would love to hear from you. Perhaps maybe even more than you like hearing from me. And that's today's class. For more news, articles, and resources about Christopher Columbus as the first civil rights activist of the Americas, icon of Western culture, paragon of Catholic virtue, and greatest hero of the 15th and 16th centuries, visit preservecolumbus.us. That's preservecolumbus, rendered as one word, dot U.S. And post a little note of appreciation for our webmaster, Tom LaCosta. I'm Il Professore Robert Petrone. A presto! <laughs> Jersey Shore has fun and sun, sand and sea, and Radio Voice Italian. This is Radio Voice Italia, USA.